Hello fellow travelers, my name is SG and welcome to the channel. Since this week is the beginning of Suicide Squad Kills the Justice League, I thought it'd be nice to go back into the Arkhamverse to do their one animated movie they did, Suicide Squad Assault on Arkham. It's a good movie in my opinion and does relate back to the original game series of Arkham. I do believe it takes place before the events of Asylum. So it is a nice story and I do think it's interesting. So without further ado, let's get into it. As I said, the story takes place right before Asylum, maybe two years prior. And this is more explaining Harley Quinn and Joker's relationship more than anything else. But don't get me wrong, it does focus on Deadshot, King Shark, Killer Frost, Captain Boomerang and all them. It shows them like we see in many different versions them being captured or recruited rather by Amanda Waller and being forced to, as the title suggests, invade Arkham Asylum because she's looking for the Riddler. The Riddler supposedly has some information that none of them are supposed to know themselves and they are to capture him and take them to Amanda Waller herself. It is an interesting movie, it's fun, it is fast paced, it does have a lot of twists and turns and keeps to the Arkham mythology. I think this was the first time actual mythology outside of the games started to come in and we started focusing on more characters other than the regular Batman, Joker, and Harley Quinn set. We do get Deadshot in the second game, Arkham City. And while they are similar, there are a lot of differences. And even this movie is definitely different to the Suicide Squad Kills the Justice League. Because, I don't want to spoil it, King Shark is obviously not supposed to be in this game if they are related. An odd take, but it is what it is. The storyline simple, yet keeps you guessing, and does have some fun moments along the way. It was before the original Suicide Squad movies came out to theaters and before James Gunn even knew he was doing the movies. So you can see, really see this setting the groundwork for what would come later. The characters are all represented pretty much to how they are in every media, from Harley Quinn to Deadshot. But the most interesting part, I think, are the voice actors, honestly. Because we do got a star-studded cast here. We got Kevin Conroy as Batman slash Bruce Wayne and everybody knows he's the definitive Batman. We got Hayden Walsh as Harley Quinn, who plays Starfire in Teen Titans. Troy Baker as Joker, who was the Joker in the Arkham Origins. Neil McDowell as Deadshot, and if some of you have watched the Flash series, you know exactly who I'm talking about as Damian Dark. We even have Matthew Gray Goldberg, who played Riddler, and I hope some of you have seen Criminal Minds, you would notice him as well. This is an odd cast and definitely out there, but they all fit the acting very well. We even have common voice actor John DiMaggio playing King Shark, which fits it pretty well. All the characters are represented pretty well. Like I said, Harley Quinn in this movie is given a weird situation. We don't know where in her storyline this is because we are hinted in the Arkham games that this is still early on, but in this, we're hinting that this is probably later on. It's an interesting take, but I do think that they represented the characters to a T, and what, like I said, would become mainly their personalities for the upcoming movies and comics. The animation's very well done overall. It doesn't pop out as much as some of the other animated DC films have. But there is a simplicity to it, there is a fun aspect to it, and definitely keeps the tone that the Arkham games have been known for, relying mainly on the Batman outfit and the Joker look that have accompanied the Arkham series since the beginning. So it is very easily identifiable for the most part. The, um, there isn't many chances that it is shown off other than this or that way. but. I think it works for what they were trying to present for the movie and for the upcoming games that were coming out. I do believe Ar Arkham City was coming out at the time. And uh, yeah, that's all I had to say about that one. Now considering the placement, like I said, the belief by fans is that this should be happening two years prior to the Arkham Asylum game. 
And if you do believe that Arkham Origins is in this timeline, it would be a little bit after that. But that's neither here nor there. We are confirmed that it is before Arkham Asylum. There aren't many references to later games or to even um, the Asylum other than the layout that we see in the movie for Arkham Asylum itself is pretty much identical to the game. They try to keep it to form as possible without really relying on anything else. We do see a lot of characters coming and going but nothing of noteworthy proportions I would have to say. So for my references that's pretty much it. That is just doing the games setting, scenery, and music, along with Kevin Conroy coming back as Batman, to really tie in and highlight the fact that this is an Arkham project. Overall, this is a really good movie. I enjoyed it, and I know a lot of people didn't care for it, and have been confused by certain placement in the timeline, but I do think this does set a standard for the Suicide Squad stories that this should be pretty much what a Suicide Squad story should be. It should be a heist movie. It should be about infiltrating something. And infiltrating Arkham is obviously a very good start to a story like that. Because it is home to many villains of Batman's nature along with different characters coming in and out. And because the Suicide Squad has always been known to rotate characters introducing other characters that could or might not be part of the overall team. I do think that it does need some work with certain aspects. Animation's a little too bland and didn't really catch the eye for most. I do enjoy the layout that we see in the games come into play in this uh, movie and certain functions from the game does make a repeat in this. But overall, this is a fun movie. The voice acting cast was definitely taking a different turn than most have in the past. And it should be noted that it is a good cast. I do like it. And I do think that it offers a different perspective on the different characters. And if you do take into account this movie, it can derail certain things about the newest game. Like, why is King Shark there? Why are certain characters still there? And left us with more questions than answers. But that's just my opinion. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Um, sorry this one's a little shorter than usual. I am working on another one that I hope to be out next week. And I hope you'll come back and check it out. Um, thanks again for watching. If you liked it, please leave a like and comment down below. And please subscribe. I'm hoping to get to 100 really soon. Alright, thanks again. See you guys later. And have a nice day.